All right, so projectile motion, right? Um, we kind of talked a bit about what it involves, and we're looking at things launching up or things being thrown at us. So in this case, we've got a ball being thrown into the air. And um, for these kind of introductory questions, we'll get these uh, kind of initial conditions, right? They're telling you what's happening. So initially, it's being launched at 80 meters per second and angle of 35 degrees. Now, a common thing, like I'll emphasize, is that the kind of equations of motion here, you're expected to be able to derive, right? So um, this is like a leading question. They may not always ask you to do that, but if they don't give you any equations, you have to be able to do this process. Sometimes they will, um, but for these ones, we're gonna do a couple where they don't, first of all, right? So what does it mean by vector equations of motion? Basically, it's looking for the acceleration the velocity and displacement, right? So the acceleration you can assume, because what was the acceleration we said? What did we assume it was? Yeah, so depending on the question. So let's say this, they'll, they'll tell you, right? So let's say they'll tell you assume g equals to negative, ah, oh, sorry, 9.8 meters per second, right? Okay, so, so far so good, yeah? Um, once we have that, then I can start building this. Um, vector equation. So remember, a vector equation technically has two parts. It's got a horizontal and vertical. But the horizontal, we just assume is zero because it, that's the um, part where we ignore air resistance and stuff, right? So it's going to be zero i minus 9.8 j. So this is our gravity, right? So remember, it's negative uh, g. So a is going to be equal to negative 9.8 j. Right, so that's your kind of first equation of motion. That's how you sort of start with this building block, right? Um, but that's only one part. How do I get to velocity? Integrate. Integrate. Oh, you guys are getting good at this now, right? So we integrate A with respect to time. Because time is kind of the variable that I'm thinking about all of these in reference to. Right? I'm going to have to use them to answer a couple of questions later on, right? So um, that's what I've got so far. And so I've got V is equal to the integral of negative 9.8 j dt. And when you integrate this, remember a few things you have to consider. First of all, okay, this j component is kind of like a unit, right? So when I'm integrating with respect to um, t, this is just a constant. And if you integrate a number, right, what do you actually get? Right? Well, if this is just a number, like if you integrate 10, for example, Kyle, what would that become if I just integrated 10? 10? 10x or 10t, right? Yeah. Um, don't forget about your constant value, yeah? So over here, same idea, right? So I've got negative 9.8 tj. Now your constant is actually going to be a constant kind of vector. So you're going to be a different type of vector, yeah? So that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing that process. How do we find that out? Well, remember, we needed some initial conditions. And we actually do have initial conditions here now, right? We knew that we could, and this is something you can assume, that... Um, yeah. So you're allowed to assume that the like, initial velocity is equal to v cos theta i plus v sine theta j, right? And in this case, obviously, we actually have these values for v and theta, right? v is the initial speed, theta is the angle that you're launching at. So it's going to be 18 cos 35 plus uh, 18 sine 35, right? And so at this point, um, that's the initial. What does the initial mean again, Callum? Um, I'm talking about when is that happening? Right, at, the start. at the start. So we can say that's when... Yeah, right. So before any time's passed, the t equals zero, basically, yeah. So at this point here, what I can do is, to, in order to evaluate this uh, vector here that I want to find, then I can say, well, at t equals zero, I'm going to get my velocity vector is actually equal to this now, right? So I can replace that, my at, because this is what's happening at t equals to zero, right? So I've got 18 cos 35 degrees plus 18 sine 35 degrees is equal to, now here, what's happening? So we've got negative 9.8 times zero plus your constant vector. So basically this, is going to equal to this, because this is going to go away, it's just going to become zero. So now I have my C value. All right, so far so good. And then we can draw up that equation over here. We can 
put it completely now, our uh, velocity vector will be, there's it over here. So V is equal to negative 9.8 Tj plus this guy over here. Yeah. Now, one thing that they tend to do is that, because you see there's actually a, a 2J components. What are the 2J components that you can see there? Yeah, yeah, TJ, it's like a nickname, right? So basically what they'll do is they'll, oh, that should have an I. They'll have this horizontal part first, kind of like how you normally write your vectors. You do the horizontal part first, and then you have the um, vertical component, but they'll just kind of like almost factorize out the J. So I've got like negative 9.8 uh, T plus 18 sine 35 J. And you notice I have left these as 35 because these aren't exact values or anything, so not going to be nice to evaluate. Almost there, right? The last one, we want the displacement equation. So the displacement equation, we use S to represent that. Same idea, we're using those ladders of derivatives. So basically, we're going backwards, so I want to integrate, yeah? Now, how do you integrate like this kind of vector form over here? Well, it's the same idea as we did over here. Basically, I'm going to look at these. I'm going to say, okay, if there's a t variable here, then I have to treat that as a variable and integrate normally. But if I want to, if I just have something like this, 18 cos 35, like, that's actually just a, just a number, right? So what I can do is I can say, well, the integral of this would be equal to, what have I got? 18 cos, I mean, all right, 18 t cos 35 i. Uh, Joel, what would this guy become? So this is, so there's a lot of pluses and t's, but 9.8 t, what's that guy going to become? Um, what was t, sorry? So t is our variable, yeah. and so we're integrating with respect to that. Sorry, 9.8 squared over yeah, 2. Good. So maybe this formula might be starting to look a bit familiar, hey, from your physics courses. So I've got 18t sine 35 degrees j. And again, we still have a constant vector. Don't forget about that, right? At this point, though, I said that regardless of where we're kind of throwing um, the ball from, you have to look back to the original equation, right? So what's kind of going on here? Well, um, if they don't give you any information, you can actually assume that the initial kind of position is the origin, right? So that would mean like an x component of zero and a y component of zero. If we're talking about things like uh, a cliff or something that you might have mentioned, Callum, then you have to change that slightly, yeah? So at here, though, um, if the x component is zero and the y component is zero, well, then your displacement at t equals to zero would just be zero as well, right? Because you've just got um, zero components for both. And then you notice over here what's going to happen. All of these have t variables, right? So this is going to be 0 is equal to 0 plus d. So d is just equal to 0. And so your final equation would just be this. So you can see how there's a lot of um, kind of work to do to actually derive these equations. Um, but it's a skill that we need to be fairly familiar with, yeah? Cool. So there's our three equations here. We've got our acceleration. We've got our velocity up here, and we've got our displacement. I think that was actually the velocity here. All right, so that's the first one done. Now we can actually start answering the questions. <laughs> <laughs>